Hi, how you doing? Good, I hope. I have a book here that is discussing things that we need to think about for the future. We are in danger and knowledge is a tool of survival. And for the little people, like I know the best, they work so hard that it's hard for them to read books and study and things like that. But somebody needs to know and go out and tell them about it. And some things they really need to sit down and read for themselves. And all people should. And especially those that's taken higher school projects and things like that. And this, <clears throat> this is about us and visions of the future or suggestions. And this is called the genetics of original sin. See the snake? Oh, bite the apple. Genetics of original sin. Sin. By Christian D. Duvey. The impact of natural selection on the future of humanity. And I know for a fact that the men that I have known before, and I had many as friends, not in any sexual way, but I've had some ask me some questions about the body <clears throat> concerning medical or sexual problems that they had, and they know very little about it. And I think that's a trait that's among most men, actually. But this is about a lot of it. Let me read the flag, the flap on it for you. A Nobel Prize winning scientist considers how and why the unprecedented success of the human species on Earth threatens the future of many living species, including humankind itself. And yes, we know too many these days that are running big businesses that endanger our lives. Increasingly absorbed in recent years by advances in our understanding of the origin of life, evolutionary history, and the advent of humankind, eminent biologist Christian de Duvy has also pondered deeply the future of life on this planet. He speaks to readers with or without a scientific background, offering new perspectives on the threat posed by humanity's immense biological success and on the resources human beings have for altering their current destructive path. Focusing on the process of natural selection, DDU explores the inordinate and now dangerous rise of humankind. His explanation for this self-defeating success lies in the process of natural selection, which favors traits that are immediately useful, regardless of later consequences. Thus the human genome determines such properties as tribal and group cohesion and collaboration and often fierce and irrational competition with and hostility toward other groups attributes that were once useful but now are often ruinously dysfunctional. Christian de Devu suggests that these inherent traits imprinted into human nature by natural selection may have been recognized by the writers of Genesis, thus inspiring the myth of original sin. Is there redemption for genetic or original sin? In a brilliant and original conclusion, the author argues that unique in the living world, humankind is endowed with the ability to deliberately oppose natural selection. Human beings have the capacity to divide measures that while contrary to their inherent proclivities can bring forth a safer world and uh, I wanted to tell you some of the names of the chapters of this book 
so you have a good idea of what's in it. And uh, one of the little things ahead of it says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Genesis 3.6 Remember that. Part 1 is the history of life on earth. Chapter 1 is the unity of life. Chapter 2 is the origin of life. I have more to talk about history on this too. Chapter 3 is the evolution of life. And I see that a lot of people don't understand what evolution really means. And I think people ought to study on it to be able to spell it out in plain layman, layman language that the little guy can understand. Part 2, the mechanisms of life. Chapter 5, Reproduction. Chapter 6, Development. Chapter 7, Natural Selection. And you really ought to know what that means. And Chapter 8, Other Evolutionary Mechanisms. Part 3, The Human Adventure. Chapter 9, The Emergent of Humans. And this has to do with the, this other book I'm going to tell you about. Chapter 10, Making the Human Brain. Chapter 11, Shaping Our Genes. Chapter 12, The Cost of Success. Chapter 13, Original Sin. Part IB, The Challenges of the Future. Chapter 14, Option 1, Do Nothing. Chapter 15, Option 2, Improve Our Genes. Chapter 16, Option 3, Rewire the Brain. Chapter 17, Option 4, Call on Religions. Chapter 18, Option 5, Protect the Environment. Chapter 19, Option 6, Give Women a Chance. Chapter 20, Option 7, Control Population. And I'm going to tell you about it, tell you what about this is the future and many of the things that they're determining and and creating for medicine and improving the human line may just spark a war because there are people that used to discuss this and they would work out what should be done and what should not be done in the moral question of it. Just like uh, buying and selling people is a bad sin in this nation. And it's against the law. But yet they're trying to go back to slavery as they make corporations a person that they buy and sell or destroy by splitting it in two or whatever. So what they're doing is tearing things up to get rich. And this is the kind of thing that it's going to be in here a bit too. And you are supposed to look for the future. And I see very few people doing that anymore. And I suggest everybody reads this book. I really do. We need to all need to do some self-reflection. But a lot of us need a little info information and if you find something in here that you don't like or don't believe then you better go do some research on it what I would do anyway so wherever you're at day or night have a nice one see you later <laughs>